Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and today's video. So the Swedish word of the day is gonna be twins, which is in Swedish tvillingar. Tvillingar. So today I'm going to do my makeup and murder video that I upload once in a while when I have time. A lot of people think that I only upload, the, upload these on Mondays, but no, I upload these when I actually have time. So it's not specific on a special day. But just a side note, when I was at the grocery store last day, night, I found a hair gel that I wanted to try to see if it was something that could be good for my hair. And dang it, it really curled up my hair. I do know that I have some white spots because yes, I'm still using the same dry shampoo, so I'm dealing with that, but it's fine. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, my hair is like super curly. When I woke up today, I was like, whoa. So today we are going to talk about a quite famous case. I do believe that if you are a true crime junkie, you have heard about this case, but I still wanted to do it because it is about two Swedish twins. This did not happen in Sweden. Uh, and I think that that is why it got so big, but it is about two Swedish girls or two Swedish twin sisters that I just wanted to talk about today and I also felt like as a fellow Swede maybe I could get some information that others cannot or have a little bit of a harder time getting hold of but then also I have realized that not a lot of people talk, talk about theories in this case and I really wanted to do so because I have some theories that I have read up on that I really want to discuss with you guys so yeah let's just begin oh and by the way i just need to see, say my little disclaimer i don't mean any harm to any of the victims that i'm going to talk about in today's case let's begin just a quick little thing before we hop into this video i'm not going to talk about the makeup that i'm using in this video but everything will be listed down below so let's begin so as i said we're going to talk about two swedish twins their names are sabina and ursula and they are actually identical twins. As you might have guessed, they are Swedish and they are born on November 3rd, 1967. They do have two older siblings, Mona being the oldest and then Bjorn being the youngest. Well, he's older than Sabina and Ursula, but you get it. They did grow up in Sweden in a town called Grasmark, which is located in Värmland in Sweden. So a lot of the things that I want to talk about when it comes to their childhood is very hard to verify because there's a lot of gossip around these girls. Well, actually there isn't that much, but a few people said the same thing about the girls and that is the only part that I'm going to mention but just take it with a grain of salt. It's not, I'm not saying that this is 100% accurate. But a lot of people claim that the twins were very hyper growing up, they were very athletic, and some sources also say that they were, were kind of aggressive. Someone claimed that one of the twins um, beat someone up, but again, this can be taken out of context. Maybe this other person hit one of the twins and they, got into a fight. I feel like that is a little bit unfair to talk about, but I just wanted to mention it. For some reason, one of the biggest things that people like to gossip about is the fact that the girls were born with their nostrils, nostrils grown together. If this is true or not, I, I don't know. It's just gossip. Like who, who freaking cares? I, I don't even know why I'm talking about it in, in this video. It is said that the girls had a pretty great childhood that's anyway what i've heard from all of the people who have covered this case but it might not be exactly true because you see their mother it's not known a lot about her all we know is that she was born in 1937 and their father was born in 1902 so there is a little bit of an age difference there six then apparently only had one arm and this was because when he was in the military he went to pick up a grenade with his left hand and when he was going to th throw it away it went off and that blew his arm off it's also said that he's an alcoholic uh, a lot of people always say that he was a kind guy but he was always walking around with a beer in his jacket or in his pocket or in his hand like he was always going around carrying some form of alcohol and he always smelled of alcohol so 
Maybe the girls didn't have it as easy as everyone says. Sixten died in 1989 when the girls were 22 years old, so they did have their father during their upbringing. So in 2000, Ursula moved to the US, and I'm not sure if Sabina actually moved the same year to Ireland, or if she was living there prior to this. But there is this man who wrote a book, and the book is called A Madness Shared by Two, that is written by David Kahn. And he says that he has the truth to their story, and that he knows exactly what happens, or he at least, brings up a lot of good information and then some a little bit more questionable information. So we're, we cannot verify this, but according to him, Sabina has a, a son called Simon and that this is true. She does have a son called Simon, but he says that Simon lived with Ursula during the year of 2000 to the year of 2006 in the US. Maybe it was because of school. Uh, he maybe wanted to go to American school or something. We don't really know, but this is what is said. So let's get into the story. So on May 16th, 2008, Ursula left America to go and visit her sister in Ireland. And a lot of people have speculated about this, like why would she do that? Why would she leave? Um, it wasn't a planned trip or anything, but we don't actually know if this plan, uh, trip was planned or not. It didn't seem planned, but maybe she wanted to see the kids. She wanted to see her sister. I mean, they were identical twins after all, and they do have a bond, so. I don't feel like it's strange for a sister to go ahead and meet another sister, but anyway. According to Sabina's husband, ever since Ursula arrived, they were inseparable. They did everything together. They didn't want to be without each other. So where one left, the other one came. During the same night as Ursula arrived, Sabina and her husband had a fight. We don't know what the fight is about, but the next day we do know that on the morning, the girls left in secret. They didn't tell where they were going, but they did leave the house. So they left for England and they arrived in Liverpool at 8.30 on that same morning. While there, they headed for the police station and I, I, I don't get this because they reported to the police in England that they feared for Sabina's children. They didn't say why, but they of course contacted the police in Ireland and they contacted the husband and I do believe that they talked to the kids as well and they were like, no, we're fine. So why couldn't they say this when they were in Ireland is a little bit unsure, but that's the way it is anyway. Sabina's husband also told them about the fight that they had had the night before and I guess that the police kind of just ignored it after that. So the girls left. So 11.30 that same day, they headed or they stepped on a coach that was going to England or London, I mean. So apparently the bus driver wanted them to put their luggage in the luggage holders or something, but the girls didn't want to do this. According to a lot of witnesses, they did hold their purses to their bodies like their life depended on it. Like they just stood real, really strange with their bags and they didn't want to put them there. But the bus driver then suspected that they might had something illegal in the purses. So he was like, can I search them? Like, can I check them? Which they declined. They did not want him to go ahead and look around into their bags. So I guess that he kind of just ignored it and he went on with the bus. But after a while, he stopped at a service station and he let the girls off. He says that he stopped there because there was a bus driver change, but there wasn't. So he uh, dropped them off there because he thought that they were suspicious and he just didn't feel comfortable having them on the bus anymore. So he told the people that worked on this service station that they are your problem now, like you need to handle them. And she saw how they acted with their bags and she was very suspicious and she got very uncomfortable. So she actually called the police and said that I think that they might have a bomb or something in their bags. So of course they sent three officers to the police and they talked to them and they were like, no, 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 we're fine. And I guess that they felt like the girls were harmless because they ended up leaving pretty quick. They kind of talked to them a little bit. They never searched their bags, which is a little bit strange, but yeah, they thought that they seemed normal. So they were like, yeah, we're okay. We're gonna, we're gonna leave you here, which they did. By the way, I did my own little dupe for the um, 
Dose of Colors Blushing Berries Palette because I didn't want to purchase it because I thought that I might have the shades. This is not a complete dupe, but still, pretty neat. Didn't have to spend that money. So now the girls are walking by foot, which is confirmed by CCTV cameras. So they, I have to look because I don't really know <laughs> the correct names of this, but they walk down the central reservation of the motorway M6. It's a motorway, freeway, or whatever. I don't really know. Now I'm gonna pop up some clips on the screen so you can go ahead and watch this, but this is super strange because they're walking there in the middle and then suddenly they just try to cross this. And of course cars stopped. Uh, one of them were hit, but not like they weren't thrown up in the air, but they were a little but just graced by a car. They do have people monitoring these uh, CCTV cameras. So the people that saw this, they called the police and the police got lucky because the police actually had a TV crew with them. They were recording something called motorway cops. And if you have ever seen like the American cops, it's something like that. So they had a TV crew coming with them. And as you can see, they are just kind of standing there talking and one of the twins are smoking a cigarette and the police are talking a little bit with, between themselves. Some are talking to the girls and it's just a calm situation. And then all of a sudden, Ursula breaks free from the police who tries to restrain her. Her jacket and hat comes off and she runs into the motorway to the side of an oncoming car that is traveling 90 kilometers an hour. This is so strange and so bizarre. Why would she run out into the motorway? If you thought that this wasn't strange enough, we're not done. And Sabina, of course, sees this because she's standing there. What? But what does she do? She also runs right out to the motorway and a car hits her immediately. She flies to the air like a freaking doll. I'm sorry for laughing, it's not funny, but it's just so freaking bizarre. Look at the car, like the car was damaged after this. Sabina was just knocked out completely, but none of them died. Ursula actually crushed her legs. So the police, of course, has run out to them and tried to help them. Sabina is conscious for, or unconscious for 15 minutes. And during the time that she is unconscious, Ursula starts to freak out, not because of her sister, but she just starts to freak out. And a lot of people have talked about this and I don't think it's strange because of course, when being hit by a car, you have to have some severe damages or at least maybe some uh, concoction. Is it called that? Concussion, I think it's called. But anyway, Ursula, she starts screaming at them. She starts to spit at them. And there is a documentary about this that I'll link down below, which is in English this time. So everyone can see it. It's totally fine, but I'll link it down below. But the officer who tries to help her, he is, at the same time he tries to help her, he also tries to not be spit on because I mean, that is never pleasant and it's kind of disrespectful. So one of the ladies come up to her and she says like, we are the police, we are trying to help you. And Ursula says like, I recognize you and you're not real. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? So as I said, Sabina is unconscious for 15 minutes. She wakes up and sometime during the time that she wakes up, she, you can see that she's kind of disoriented. She doesn't really know what's happening and she tries to get up. And they are like, no, 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 you need to stay down. You're injured, like, please stay down. She doesn't want to and sometime during this point, she screams to her sister like, they're gonna try and steal your organs. <sighs> it's just crazy. And of course they suspect that these girls are high or something, but the story is not over here. Sabina gets up and one of the officers tries to get her down again and like to stay down, but she just runs to the other side of the motorway. They are trying to keep her calm and try her to stay there, but she hits one of the police women in the face and then runs out to the motorway. She was never hit um, again, but it's super, like, it's so strange to me. Uh, the police need six people. They are six people who has to carry her to the other side and to the ambulance. And she's all the, all the time while screaming help, 
she's screaming for the police not realizing that they are the police <laughs> i'm sorry it's not funny but it's just it's so strange and the ambulance is like we don't want these uh, women in the ambulance we don't feel safe with them so they actually inject them with something that will calm them down so that they can have them like in peace and treat them in the ambulance so ursula is actually taken to the hospital by a helicopter sabina is also taken to the hospital but she's only at the hospital for five hours and then she needs to come with the police to the police station because obviously she hit an officer and she is gonna get sentenced for that something that they did find odd is that she never asked about her sister i mean she just saw a sister get hit by a car and she never asked about her like how is she doing is she fine where is she nothing like that she never ever asked about her sister as i said they did have a tv crew with them and i don't know if a tv crew actually went out to ursula but they did go along with sabina and they get on camera when sabina says that we have a saying in sweden that is an accident rarely comes alone usually one follows and a lot of people have speculated about this but i mean i'm swedish we do have a saying like that i don't know why but we do have a saying like that that is not an uncommon thing so this happened on may 17th and on may 19th so two days later she gets sentenced and she pleads guilty to have hit a police officer and to have run into the motorway and she was sentenced to one day in prison that she had already served so she was released immediately so something worth noting is that ursula did have her blood taken and tested and she had no drugs in her however they never tested sabina's blood and they never did a psychiatric uh, evaluation on her so i left you a little bit because lashes impossible to do them on camera but i did leave you off where i said that sabina pled guilty and that she only got a day in jail which she had already served so she was released so at that same day, she is trying to locate her sister. She's walking just around and she had her plastic bag with her or she had a plastic bag that the police had given her and she had some of the, her belongings in there. She did have Ursula's green coat on her while her own red one was in um, the bag. She apparently had laptops and cell phones and so on in this plastic bag. While walking around she met two guys and I have to see what they are called because I remember their first names but their past names are a little bit weird. Uh, I do know that one is Peter Malloy and the other one is Glenn Hollingshed Hall or Hollingshead. Hollingshead or Hollingshed? Yeah. So I think not 100% sure, but I think that the men had been to a pub and they were out walking um, Glenn's dog and Sabina said, oh, cute dog. They started talking and Peter said that she appeared a bit nervous, like she was petting and stroking the dog, but she was still acting a bit nervous. And then she asked them for the closest bed and breakfast and they were like, oh, honey, there's no bed and breakfast around here, but you can come back to my house said glenn and when i heard this like i think that that is a little bit suspicious i feel like it's something strange which so uh, so sorry but it is a little bit strange it doesn't matter if he's a guy it would be strange if a woman would offer a place or like just meet someone and be like hey come back to my house i would be a little bit like oh thank you but no uh, but apparently people who know Glenn said that this was not a uncommon thing apparently really want like to help people so when she was getting this offer Peter said that she was a little bit more relaxed and she was like yeah fine and then she walked with them back to Glenn's house and Peter came along so in the house they had a couple of beers they had some cigarettes and they were just kind of chilling but peter said that she at one point felt good and was acting totally fine and then the next she could be a little bit 
paranoid like she could walk up to the window lift the curtain to just look out and peter said that he thought that maybe she had ran away from like one of her partners or something and that she was looking out for him so that he wouldn't find her maybe that was why she was looking for a bed and breakfast but she told her story about her sister being in the hospital and the fact that she wanted to locate her and peter <laughs> explains at one point she was like oh do you want a cigarette she asked both the guys like do you want a cigarette and they were like yeah fine sure they took a cigarette each and then put them in their mouth before Sabina just snatched them out of their mouth and they were like oh okay and she screamed like no 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 they might be poisoned and Peter thought that this was so strange because she had been smoking out of the same pack the entire night so he just he got an iffy feeling about Sabina which if this as he says is true then I would too in the end of the night he left and Peter no not Peter but Glenn and Sabina were alone and she slept there and according to police they never had any sexual relationship they never did anything like that how they know that I mean I don't really know so Sabina spent the night at Glenn's place and then the next day she spent all day there as well so the next day when she had slept there only one night so the day after uh, some of, some one of them were cooking dinner and glenn was like hmm maybe i want to have some tea and see if sabina wants to have some tea as well so he went out to his neighbor and was like hi do you have any tea bags and he was like yeah sure uh, I'm just washing my car right now so I'll get into you in a little bit and just hand you the tea bags I'm just gonna finish up here so Glenn was like yeah 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 sure and went back to his house then not even a minute after that he stumbles out of his house says she stabbed me she stabbed me he's bleeding and a lot of people likes to say that he died instantly but he didn't he actually had some time to talk to his friend he said that i think you're dying the friend was like no you're not gonna die i promise you'll survive this of course he called the police uh peter also says that please 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 look after my dog when i'm dead which the neighbor uh promised to do and then glenn died during this sabina ran out of, out of the house which we can see on cctv cameras she fled the scene and this is so strange but she ran a little bit and then stopped hit herself in the head with a hammer that she had brought and then ran and then she stopped hit herself with a hammer a couple of times in the head and then ran again like so bizarre and apparently there was this one guy who saw this he was sitting in his car and driving and then he saw her and he was like something's not right here so he actually ran out of his car and tried to get the hammer from her they started fighting a bit and they started struggling and he just says that sabina was just screaming right like loudly just out like Rah! while they were fighting then eventually he got knocked out and he thought that Sabina had taken her fist and hit him in the head. But this wasn't the case. Later on, the police actually told him like, no, she had hit a brick in her jacket and um, she hit him over the head with this brick. So of course she continues to run after this because why would she stop? So Sabina was being, whoo, Sabina was being chased, but she just ran and ran and ran. So the, this was like an ongoing chase, but then she runs to a bridge and she jumps, it's 12 meters. She jumps, so she gets on the motorway again. Like no, no car hit her or anything, but she did break both her legs and she got a, a skull fracture or fracture in her skull, not sure. I just have to say that this blush brush or this powder brush is life. So even though both these girls have had like superpowers prior to this, they can't take everything. Like somewhere it has to be a stop. So now Sabina can't run anymore. So of course she gets arrested. She again first gets taken to the hospital so that they could treat her and but she is arrested her trial for killing glenn starts at uh, uh, september 1st 2009 so the next year and now ursula is also released from hospital she was treated for around four no three months so she was released in september 2008 
and it is said that she went back to some people say Norway I don't really get this but no she went back to Sweden uh, but we'll get to that a little bit more later on in this video so what I'm gonna talk about now is something that is super strange and I do apologize but I need to look at my notes because I cannot explain this in a good way so I have written it down uh, just so I wouldn't confuse you. So Sabina pled guilty to manslaughter with diminishes responsibilities the next day. So when the police actually questioned her, yes, this is something that is super strange as well. Every time the police questioned her, I mean, they tried multiple times and even in court, but all she had to say for herself was no comment. On every single question they asked her, it was always no comment, no comment, no comment. Which is just, like, why wouldn't you want to explain yourself? But again, we'll get to that later on. So both the prosecutor and the defense claimed that Sabina was insane during the time of the motorway accident or incident and during the killing of Glenn. But now, when the trial was almost one year later, or a little bit over a year later, she was sane again. And how do you explain this? Well, they explain this as, I'm so sorry to all of the French people out there, but they say that there's something that is called foyer à deux. I'll have it on the screen because my French, I've never read French, I don't know anything except bonjour and baguette. <laughs> anyway, uh, they claim that she was the secondary um, sufferer from this. This means that her sister, when she met her sister Ursula, Ursula was insane and when Sabina met Ursula she was also getting insane because she was spending time with Ursula because twins have this sort of bond and connection that we other people can't really understand and yes this doesn't have to do with every twin so don't be alarmed if you're a twin and you're like um, I'm not like that. It's fine. That's it's not for everyone. It's not everyone So this means that during a couple of weeks time after have spending time with Ursula she was insane But then she was sane again and the reason for why she may have been so calm at the hospital and at the police station the first time is because she was sedated like she got some pills or something injected to her that would calm her down Yes, super strange, but that is what they claim. You have to make up your own mind, but this is what they argued, and she was sentenced to five years in prison. She was eligible for parole in 2011. I don't know if this is the year that she got sentenced, but she was alleged, she was alleged for parole that year. Something maybe not even worth mentioning, but I'm gonna mention it anyway, is that when she was there in prison, she turned to Christianity. So we're now done with this case. And I will say that when the episode of the uh, show Motorway Cops was released, of course they have to delete some footage and add some footage. You know what I mean? Like they can't air everything. So they did actually have some deleted footage, of course. Some of this footage actually got leaked. And I, I don't remember if that was in the documentary that I watched, but I actually think that it is. But something that people found strange when this was leaked is that two officers are standing there talking. I'll link the YouTube clip down below. It's just a YouTube clip of maybe like, I think it's like 39 seconds or something. But what's said there is that one of the guys says to them that we should give one of these women a one three one three one three six which means that they suspected that one of these girls had something wrong with their mental health you remember that sabina never got treated for her mental problems she never got anything they never tested her or anything and it is theorized that the police actually asked the crew on motorway cops to delete this footage so that they wouldn't be res held responsible for Glenn's death. Because if they had treated Sabina, they had seen that she would have been insane and then she wouldn't have been released until she was sane. And then Glenn wouldn't have died. It is also said that the crew that was on this Motorway Cops TV show was actually switched out after half the time had passed just so they could have a little bit more control of what was aired and what was said and whatnot. 
again just a theory but before we hop into all of the other theories that we are going to discuss right now I do want to say a little bit about the women today so none of them has reoffended as far as we know and as I said there was this rumor that Ursula was living in Norway which she wasn't she was living in Sweden and she was actually not living far from where I lived she was living with an American man so Ursula actually lived in Göteborg or as you say in Swedish English Gothenburg. She actually lived here for many many years after this incident but after some time had passed she moved back to America and she is living in a licensed partnership with an American man. I'm not gonna mention this American man's name because I don't feel like he has anything to do with this story. I do know the name. I don't think it's fair to leak it. If you want to know who it is then you have to do your own digging and then you can make whatever you want to do with that information. I'm not gonna spoil it here. I do also know that she moved to Santa Barbara in the US and that she has changed her name. I'm talking about Ursula once again. She is still Ursula Eriksson but or Ursula Eriksson. She just spells her first and last name a little bit different. Once again, I'm not gonna spoil it here because Ursula or Ursula was never convicted of anything. So it is said that Sabina cannot enter the US because she is convicted. So it is said that Ursula has actually hired Sabina as the au pair because apparently that is some sort of loophole whether this is true or not I, I, I like i can't confirm that and none of the girls has ever spoken out about this incident not to anyone like not to I, i'm assuming that their family knows what actually happened or why they acted the way they did but they have never spoken out to a newspaper they have never spoken out to press or media or anything like that which makes this so hard because all we have to go on is our theories so let's start off with the first theory the reason they ran into the motorway is because they was chased and they didn't want to get group raped is that the way you say it apparently there was there is this rumor that some people chased them and that is why they ran into the motorway because they didn't want to get raped. I would say that this is very unlikely. The rumor started by none other than their brother Bjorn. Bjorn is by the way bear in English, Swedish. Bjorn did an interview with a Swedish newspaper called Expressen and he said I, I, I don't understand this interview at all. I looked it up and I read it and I was like he, this is the only thing he said. He claims that the reason why they ran into the motorway is because they were going to get gang raped or whatever it's called and that if he were a girl, he would also rather run into the motorway. Now, is this something that he made up? Maybe he got a little bit of money because of doing this interview? Or is this something that is something that Sabina or Ursula has actually said to him? I have so many questions about this theory and I don't find it credible at all. What I do find credible is that maybe Bjorn was offered some money to do this interview and he wanted to give them something. So he just made this story up. I don't feel like this is credible at all. We could see on the CCTV camera that no one was after them, no one was chasing them, and that doesn't explain why they were acting so weird with their bags. They, it doesn't explain why they were acting so strange uh, and running into the motorway because we could see that this was recorded by uh, this TV cre crew. <laughs> it's just very, very unlikely in my personal opinion. The next theory is that someone drugged them. This rumor has actually started because I said that Sabina had a son called Simon or Simon. Simon has going around in a 
bunch of different forums and commenting and defending his mother and one comment he made was I'm Simon Eriksson and I don't appreciate you spreading spreading your bull online same goes for the PCP claims because a lot of people said that they were on drugs it's bullshit my mother is not a drug user maybe she got a drug did you ever think about that if that was ever the case okay so i just slapped some lipstick on and now i'm back uh i am finished with my makeup but i thought that we would still go through all of this so that we can get through this video this idea is crap I, I don't find it to be credible just because of the fact that as I said in the hospital Ursula was blood tested or they took her blood and she didn't have any drugs in her system but again there are drugs that you can take that will disappear from your blood within hours so could it be something like that yeah it could have been but okay so as I said there was this book written by David Kahn and the book is called A Madness Shared by Two and I haven't read the book, but I did see an interview with him. I can go ahead and link that down below as well. It's three parts and I find him to be very, very uncredible. There's a bunch of things that he says that I don't find credible at all. And I find the person that does the interview to be very, very unprofessional. Uh, but you, you can watch that and make up your own mind. But I feel like a lot of the things that he says is bullshit. But I do also believe some of the things that he said. And he has two things that he points out. So one of the points is that um, the police was looking at the girls as uh, drug smugglers. They knew that the girls were sm uh, smuggling drugs. But they didn't want to arrest them just because they wanted to take the bigger fishes so to speak like they wanted someone on top of them so that they can break the chain it is theorized that the girls did have drugs or a lot of cash in their suitcases or in their handbags so that is why they didn't want the bus driver to look at it and remember when i said that they were at the service station and the service lady said that she suspected a bomb so she called the police according to david can there has been similar instances instances in uh, the uk maybe not similar but when someone has mentioned a bob bomb they have sent out the bomb crew which they didn't do this time they sent out three officers that just talked to them apparently they didn't look through their bags because they wanted to send the girls off so that they could meet up with uh, one of their drug partners again I don't have any opinion about this. I feel like, yes, it could be true. It could not be true about the fact that they did look in the bags, not saying that they were smuggling drugs, just about the fact that if the police looked in the bags or not, I cannot say. Also, apparently Peter, that was Glenn's friend, did see a big pile of cash with Sabina's belonging. Since they were under observation, this is why the police let Sabina off after she had hit the officer and after all of this went down with the motorway situation, just because they wanted to catch the bigger fish. David Can also says that she did not meet Glenn just by coincidence. She met him through drug relations apparently they had been texting or something like that as i said sabina had with her a bag a plastic bag with her belongings some phones which would explain why she had multiple phones because i do believe that you might have a private phone you might have a business phone but again, I don't really know how many phones there are or how many computers there are. Another thing to note is that according to the author, he says that Glenn cannot have been stabbed by Sabina alone. There has to be at least one more suspect. And this is because I'm gonna put up a picture right here so you can see, but there were four stab wounds in him. So as you can see on this picture, this is the knife, but then also you can see where he was stabbed and how deep the stab wounds was. So he was stabbed in the neck, in the heart, and two times in the lower chest. And he says that these stab wounds doesn't add up to the knife. He says the two of the stab wounds adds up to the knife, 
which I would assume is the two one in the lower chest while the one that is on the neck and on the heart doesn't add up as well as two of the stab wounds was actually on the left side and Sabina is left-handed so if you are standing opposite to someone and you're stabbing someone if you are left-handed this is my left you would stab them in their right but she stabbed them in their left and that doesn't add up with how the angle had to be. He did not have any defensive wounds on him, which makes them believe that maybe someone was holding him, maybe Sabina stabbed him two times and then someone else stabbed him two times as well. So the, the reason why Glenn got murdered according to this theory is that maybe there was some form of like, argument about money or drugs or something we don't know but it is theorized that he was killed because of this something else that actually strengthens this theory is that a couple of days after the murder sabina's belongings were found in the neighborhood just spread out not her phone not her laptop nothing um of value so to speak so if the police would have arrived to Glenn's house, they would have taken that into possessions and, and as evidence. And as we can see by the CCTV cameras, Sabina did not have anything with her except the brick and um, the hammer that she hit herself in the head with. Maybe someone stabbed Glenn, Sabina ran and was scared, so she ran and took off. This person took Sabina's things so that they could take out this money that maybe Peter had seen, the computer, the phones, and then everything else, like the clothes and everything that he assumed or she assumed to be trash, threw out. This is likely I would say especially when looking at the stab wounds and if you think about it Sabina has never spoken out uh, she only said no comment to the police maybe because she was scared for her life maybe it actually was that she was a part of this drug smoke uh, smuggling team and that she was scared for her safety for her children and for um, Ursula and for her husband so she took the fall for this murder she said no comment so that they couldn't come after her or her family um, which makes total sense something that might not add up to this is that when Glenn came out he said she stabbed me she stabbed me if there were multiple maybe he would have said they stabbed me but she stabbed me, she stabbed me. It could have been another female that was with Sabina. Something else that is a little bit strange is, this, is that Glenn's family has tried to fight this very, very much because they don't believe that Samida got enough uh, of a punishment. They think that she should have served more time because they lost um, their brother, their son, like they lost someone very, very dear to them. And it is very strange that the family has tried to get out the interrogation evidence, but they have never been allowed to do so. And yes, this is strange. So this entire case to me is very, very strange. And I think also it is very, very strange that no one has talked about the theories, but I did want to mention the theories just because I feel like the theorist in this case is the biggest part because I feel like there's so many people that has done videos about this case that you know you have documentaries but there's no one that has talked about the theories that I have talked about today in my I have never seen it anyway so I just thought that it was so interesting and I needed to talk to you guys and I would love to hear your thoughts when I did the Yona Henningson case I was blown away by like what you said and all your theories and whose fault you actually thought it was like i didn't agree with everyone there i agreed with some of you but i really really respect your opinions i would love to hear what your theories are but keep it respectful i'm so excited for my next case i am going to do a serial killer or a cannibal so stay tuned for that. I don't know which one I'm gonna do first, but we'll see. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, please feel free to thumbs the video down. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.